Over the last year, there has been a lot of conversation, a lot of discussion and research that's gone into understanding the environmental impact, the change of that impact that has come about from our change of behaviour when it comes to commuting to and from offices versus working from home. This is a very complicated equation to solve because there are many factors. So when I found Jan Beiser from the University of Zurich was actually studying a PhD and conducting a PhD in this particular area, I thought I had to speak with him. So Jan is a doctor at Zurich University. He's currently residing in Stockholm, Sweden. And he's a researcher and lecturer in digital technologies and the impact on the environment. So I asked Jan to join me and briefly explain what he does and the research that he has recently conducted. I'm working actually at the University of Zurich in a research group called Informatics and Sustainability Research, in which we try to understand um, what impacts digital technologies have specifically on the environment and how it can be utilized in order to cr create benefits for the environment. And in my case, I specifically looked at telecommuting or working from home or other places which are not your employer's office. Um, actually already before the pandemic, but of course it increased um, its significance tremendously during the pandemic. Um, and whether telecommuting as an application of digital technologies, um, for example, of video conferencing and cloud services, actually contributes to a reduction of environmental impact, specifically energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. And what is always assumed that it does, it's always assumed that it does, because our commuting, um, specifically when it's done with motorized transport, causes a lot of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions, specifically if you sit alone in a car every day and drive to work and back. Um, so this can potentially be saved if you work from home. However, there are also other impacts which we need to consider. For example, I might increase my energy consumption at home. I might have more time or more money for other activities um, because I save this time. You, I usually spend on commuting every day and depending on what I do with this time, um, which I saved, I can cause other environmental impacts. For example, if I decide to sleep a little bit longer every morning, <laughs> I probably don't have the biggest um, impact in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, unless I like to sleep at 40 or 50 degrees Celsius and my heating system works with, with oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but usually that's not, that's not the problem. But if I, for example, um, use to save time to, to and spend it on additional leisure trip or private trip in the evening to visit a friend, to visit a friend which I which I do by car, um, then it might cause additional impacts. And to, yeah, well, we were trying to understand how. Um, well, what's the bottom line? <laughs> so it's an incredibly difficult thing to understand, isn't it? Because, like you said, there's so many different ways that people could change their behaviour. There's so many different variables in. You know, one person's living arrangement, let's talk mm. about you know, working from home, and you know, maybe they don't always work from home, maybe they work from a cafe mm. uh, or somewhere else. How did you, how did you kind of baseline that? Because in order to model it and understand it, you've got to kind of come up with some kind of baseline, haven't you? Yeah, um, what we did in, in one case, which is a, is a project going on in, in Stockholm, at KTH Stockholm, um, where a co-working living lab was actually set up in the south of Stockholm, which was kind of an office space, which allowed people who live close by to this office space um, to work from the space on several days per week, instead of traveling to the more distant employer's office. And what we did there is we, we gathered data on their common commuting behavior, behavior when people travel to their employer's office, did they go by public transport, did they drive by car, um, did they drive by bike, um, and so on, and compared it with their um, use of transport modes when they worked either from home or from the co-working space, which, is, which was close to their home. Um, so we first established the baseline. The baseline is basically, what do I do when I go to my employer's office? And then we compare it with 
uh, what people do when they work from home or from an office closer to their home. And this was, I think, normalized by understanding it from the point of um, how people decide and manage their time. Was that correct? Exactly. Um, you can either say you look at the, at the transport components only. Um, how far do people travel every day and um, which transports modes do they use? But we argue that um, not only the transport impacts of working from home or closer to home are relevant, but also all the other activities I do during an average 24 hours days, because not only transport, but also leisure activities can cause environmental impacts or just doing nothing at home can cause environmental impacts or causes environmental impacts in principle because I need to heat my home I need to light my home um, um, when I'm there. Yeah. So we kind of looked at uh, we used time use diaries to, to record what people did on a day when they worked from home as compared to when they worked from the employer's office for example. Mm -hmm. And then so I guess the, the big point of this is what did you what did you discover? What does it mean? Well, um, we, we, we saw several things, actually. So the first and the most important thing, I, I, I think, is that um, when people work from home, they, in fact, spend less time in transport. So they didn't compensate the commute with additional travel for private, for private purposes or for any other purposes, which is good already. We also saw that people, when they work from home, um, when they worked from home or specifically from this co-working space, which was closer to their homes than their employer's office, they increasingly used more environmentally friendly transport modes, like biking or walking, instead of using the car, which was the common transport mode or public transport to go to their employer's office. And the fact that this, we saw some sort of change in this direction was only possible because this working space was closer to their was so close to their homes that they could actually work or that they could actually buy um, which is uh, a difference to other studies in this field where the also the the, the impacts of a co-working space were investigated but the co-working space or the, the the work hub was too far away in order for by being biking or walking being a really feasible alternative to to to, to driving there so this is good news, actually, because transport is in general a very, um, if, if you think about greenhouse gas emissions or energy consumption per unit of time I spend on an activity. Transport is one, um, specifically motorized transport, one of the most environmentally unfriendly activities I can, I can, I can conduct. So this was a, was a good shift, actually. We saw also, and this was not surprising, that people had more time for, for leisure and um, um, maintenance activities, for example, household care, like vacuum cleaning or, or similar things. And when they work from home, uh, which is, as I said, not surprising. It's a bit difficult to, to, to estimate what are the environmental consequences of this, <laughs> because we did not know which exact activities they performed. We just knew that they were doing more housework and so on. But in principle, I would assume substituting motorized transport with housework is usually a good substitution in, ter in terms of the environment or energy consumption. Um, yeah. But still, what could happen is that, of course, people in general consume more energy when they're at home for heating the house or for cooling the house or for, 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 um, for lighting the house. For example, they need to cook at home. And this also requires a lot of energy. Um, we could not find, um, estimate that, but it's certainly a risk for increasing energy consumption at home. This means if people decide or if companies decide to adopt a, a home office policy where people increasingly work from home, they should at the same, they, they should know about the risk that now more energy might be consumed at home. That means they should adopt additional energy saving measures at their offices. This means try to reduce the office space in order to reduce your heating energy consumption or your cooling and lighting energy consumption as one measure. And also try to ensure that your employees 
um, do not use the saved commuting time for other environmentally unfriendly, specifically transport activities, for example. Maybe they can be equipped with a public transport pass so they, so they do not use the, so they use the car less for, for private purpose or, or um, any other um, potential measures which would avoid that. Um, so one needs to think about all the potential negative impacts and think about in a creative way about measures to, to reduce these, these negative side impacts, which are certainly not intended, but are a risk. Hmm. Very interesting. So there's still a lot of open questions and still a, a lot of assumptions that need to be fleshed out and challenged and yeah. investigated. From your from your study, um, and you may not have the answer to this, yeah. but from the study, is working from home better or worse than working in centralised offices for the environment? That's a very good question, and I do not, <laughs> I do not have the have, have the final answer to that. But I would rather see it um, from a different perspective. Um, I would first suggest that our current commuting patterns are not sustainable from from various perspectives. We spend a lot of time commuting, which is our living time. <laughs> And um, if we can avoid it, I think it can create a lot of benefits. And at the same time, this, this let's call it wasted time to exaggerate a little bit, um, also causes negative environmental impact. So this whole process of the heavy commuting five days per week to a faraway employer's office uh, has various side effects. So we should aim at solutions that can avoid that <laughs> or reduce it at least. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, working five days per week from home might not be a, a preferable alternative for, for many people because they do not have the, the, the right facilities at home to work properly because they cannot concentrate because they, people want to leave their houses every once in a while and do not spend 24 seven in their houses. Um, so in this case, um, uh, uh, res uh, a co-working space or work hub which is close to my home might be a convenient alternative where and in the future an employee can for example flexibly decide I maybe need to see my colleagues in my employer's office one or two days per week on one or two day days per week I can work at home without feeling feeling that the, the ceiling is falling on my head and um, on the other days, I can uh, work from the close by co-working space and still avoid these lengthy commutes and environmentally unfriendly um, commutes to the office. So I think we need to, pro in order to really um, create a change, which is um, on the one side good for the environment, but on the other side uh, meets the needs of every individual, we need to create these combined possibilities of working from home, of working close to home, and of of course, the required meetings of our personal meetings with colleagues and, and officers, which might be farther away. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, this idea of a community based work hub is something that keeps coming up in several conversations. Mm. Mm. And even the employers, um, maybe um, role in sponsoring that and making that possible. Mm. Um, it's, it's a very interesting idea. Now, that's that's fantastic. So based on on what you said, and you know, I I didn't think you'd come out with a definitive answer of it's better or worse. <laughs> so thank you for at least trying. The question I was asking is, is working from home better or worse um, mm. environment instead of working from a centralized office? And when I say working from home, I mean working in a decentralized way, mm. distrib distributed way. Yeah. Um, so if we wanted to get to that definitive answer, is it better or worse? I.e., should we mm. be supporting it or not? Um, taking your research and understanding that your research is a piece of that answer, mm. what else do you think should be done? Um, what other questions should be asked? And how do you want to be involved in that? What do you plan if you plan anything? Um, well, I think what, what there are a lot of studies about the, the environmental impacts of decentralized flexible work already, which all, all grasp certain aspects. Still, there's a lot of uncertainty about um, um, the 
bottom line environmental impacts also because they can be different for every individual <laughs> so it's difficult to come up with a, with a definite answer but i think what is certainly required is more long-term studies um, because on the one side we have short-term effects um, of of flexible work models or de decentralized working schemes that on certain days um, I, I do not have to commute but i spend more time at home and might increase my energy consumption there for example but on the other side there are long-term effects um, in the long term if i as an employee can expect that i only need to commute to my employer's office every once per week or so i might accept living further away from it where housing prices are for example cheaper but i might also consider getting more um, a larger apartment or a larger house because i need a separate office uh, from which i can work on these are a lot of long-term effects where um, there's still a lot of uncertainty about. And um, so I, I propose to make um, more long-term studies on these effects and try to understand what characteristics of individuals, uh, how, how, how individuals differ, different certain characteristics like job type, um, like family type, income type, and so on and um, how these characteristics influence um, the long-term impacts yeah mm, excellent thank yeah. you there's some well, background noise here i suppose <laughs> unavoidable when working from home yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's where the benefits of the of the co-working spaces come in <laughs> yeah although they can be quite noisy too yeah. <laughs>